All right, how y'all doing this week? This video is about turning a candy bowl. I started off with a really nice round for change blank, and I had to square it up. I hadn't done that yet, but I got a new tool in, and I'm going to show it on another video. I, I was just kind of testing it out, didn't know if it was something that I should promote or show or whether it was safe or not safe it as you can see it did it did clean it up real good as a matter of fact uh, it's on two centers well I'm not saying that I didn't turn it any with anything but I'm just saying that it was not far from what you see right now when I got finished cleaning it up I'll show you on the next video uh, there's two uh, two new items that I'm going to be showing on the next video well, let's talk about this video. So what I've got is I've got two live centers on each end, and I'm just squaring up the end here. I'm going to wind up with what I'm making. There's a huge crack at the base of the other side and so there's kind of some cracks all over it I'm kind of hoping they're not that bad but we'll see as we get down in it I do see a crack on the end we're going to wind up turning that away and so I'm kind of starting backwards I'm cleaning up this end this is actually going to be the, the open part of the bowl and we're going to turn it around It's really important that the uh, face plate be flat on the piece of wood so that it doesn't wobble or anything like that. So that's what I'm really doing and I'm checking to make sure that I don't have a dome in the middle, which I did, or, you know, is crooked or anything like that. So I'm just trying to clean it up. And in this particular case, because I'm going to wind up having two face plates probably on it at one time, I just... I really need it to be steady and you can kind of see well the next time I stop it you'll kind of see a little bit of the cracks that I'm talking about that uh, obviously you can see that crack I was just feeling right there is the one I'm going to leave in it it's really not a crack it's just kind of a knot and I think it'll I think it'll work good I'm using the thin clear CA glue from Starbon and I have the accelerator there as I'm turning things I'm starting to see more cracks in the cracks that are that are there they are just soaking up the Starbon and actually some of those I'm putting it in the top and it's running down the side so I'm trying to put it in to help hold the, the wood together so that it doesn't grab hold of some massive crack and split it or anything like that. I guess what I was trying to say is that as I was turning that end and straightening it up and cleaning it up, I was running into the cracks that I saw on top. Anyway, so now I'm putting the face plate on here and it seems like I keep picking up the wrong uh, face plate and trying to get it centered but I think there's a method to the madness that I'm doing basically I took that one off of one end and flipped it around to the and put it on the other end I actually cut out a couple more flips I think I wasn't sure what I was doing so this is the side that was facing the uh, the headstock of the wave And now we're working on the base, which is the way it normally would be to begin with.
and here we are five minutes into the video and I'm just getting started. This is my bowl gouge with an Irish grind on it. I love using it because it really can move some wood and it's uh, pretty fun. I'm still learning some of it and uh, how to use it correctly. Some of the blades and some of the points and tips every now and then I'll forget stick it in there and it'll it'll grab this look might help y'all out if you notice also I raised the camera up so that my helmet doesn't doesn't hit the the camera make it look goofy I, actually that's that mark that I just made is going to be the bottom of the bowl and this that I'm working on right now is the bottom of the stand that's holding the bowl I should have put a picture at the very beginning maybe Maybe I'll go back and do that. So you kind of know what it's supposed to look like. And yeah, I did go back and put a picture at the beginning. So maybe you kind of understand what I'm fixing to start digging out here. Okay, now this is going to be the beginning of when you see a crack, it gets bigger and bigger every time I stop the lathe. And it seems like every little nothing crack turns into the Grand Canyon. So, I'm being careful not to grab hold of that area that I see that there's a big crack and it's getting bigger. Can you feel the excitement? Will he fall into the crack? You'll have to stay tuned. Sometimes I wonder if anybody even listens to me or if they're or if they're turn the volume down and just and sometimes I wonder if they even watch this part of the video. But it's some good turning. And there is a big surprise. I should have said something real early on that kind of happens uh, soon and yes I'm actually taking this metal piece and sticking it down in probably about an inch and a half so I know at least it's going to be there for a while and I've just got to live with it I've already started turning the way I'm turning. This is a, a round nose. Well, not round, but kind of a half round, inch and a quarter, I think it is, or inch and an eighth, something like that. And I'm going to use it to make the actual circumference, the turn of the base down there pretty soon. Still marking where to stay away from, so to speak. Trying to stay below that crack. If you're still watching, then uh, you're kind of in luck. I'm not in luck, but you're in luck. What's fixing to happen is that I'm going to blow off. There's some sawdust on the motor, and there's some at the front. And I just decided to go. I'm going to switch back to normal speed right, right now. And I'm going to blow off the a little grate for the motor. Now I turn around and look away and it starts smoking. 
I don't know if you can see it, but it definitely is smoking. And, you know, it takes a pretty good bit of smoke to be able to see something like that. So now I'm just thinking I overheated it. I was cutting really hard. And this is the beginning of me trying to figure out figure out what I'm going to do with the motor because it's, it's not happy. And from this point on, I believe that I'm actually cutting much slower, just trying not to put the motor under a, a great load. And it's actually still smoking. And the reason I, I went back to slow motion and showing this is that this is a big deal. It's aggravating. So I'm going to go back to fast forwarding so that, I mean, basically I'm just blowing it until it quits smoking and finally I turn it on and start using it. I've already called to uh, find out how much the new motor is and, and I probably wound up reading online that this is a real common problem with with this particular lathe. Oh, that's right, I forgot. I, that I, Everything's hot. The uh, Even that green cover is hot. It just has the belts and all in it. I just took the, or fix and take the mask off, and when I when I took that um, filtered mask to keep the dust and everything out, it has a carbon filter in it, and all of a sudden, when I took that off, I smelled smoke like crazy, and it just smelled like wood burning, which in a place like this is not a good thing to be smelling something on fire, and, you know, at least I know where it is. But just then I touched the blue, I mean the green part of it, and I wasn't about to touch the motor. I could feel the heat coming off. It's probably around 250, 300 degrees, something like that. And that green uh, piece that was up there, it was real hot. So I'm trying to get a fan in here and get back to work or cool it down some. I think I walked away for about... 15 or 20 minutes and then came back and then I actually touched the motor and it was it was warm and I left it like this like I said about 15 or 20 minutes and and then this is later and I took the green cover off to help get the heat just get the heat out of there so we'll see what happens, and I'll let, I'll let everybody know in the next video what I wound up doing. I could kind of tell, or maybe it was in my head, I'm not sure, but it just seemed like that it was, I could bog it down a little bit easier, like it lost a lot of power. But I have no real way of checking whether it lost performance or not. It just seemed like it, and it definitely was getting hotter. I could actually feel the heat when I went back to mess with it on my forearm. I mean, that's, it. well, like I said, it was around 250, 300 degrees. So it'd be just like having an oven right there, a small oven. Enough about that. Let's get back to the good part. This uh, poor piece of wood looks like it's been through a rough time. A lot of battle scars and everything else on it and glue being held together and and I'm worried about the weight so it turns out good everything turns out good though and I did uh, use the lathe for about 15 minutes and it did get hot and so I had to walk away again and when I say hot I'm talking about really not not good Now I'm getting the space going and uh, trying to, there's a crack right 
right above all this. I'm trying to stay away from that. Now as I stop it and it comes to a stop, you can see all the cracks that I'm feeling and they're just getting worse. I'm using the medium thick starbond because the outside is almost done and I'm just simply doing all the cracks and then spraying the, the activator on it so it dries quickly and then um kind of filling them up too, hoping they don't go deep. It's going down so quick. And these these cracks are really a, a lot bigger than they look. I mean, they're, I could stick that nozzle, just the regular nozzle, I could stick it down in there easy. And there's another one that you'll see later. And if you notice the one that is right in between those two, it goes down this side and up the other side. So my fear throughout the whole time was grabbing that crack and just pulling that whole side piece off. And that was something I didn't really want to do. Which reminds me, I've got to order some more of the clear CA from Starbond. So if you happen to need any, please use the link on the notes below this video. There's a 10% a, a off on, I think it's 10, maybe 15, I can't remember. But, but it is a, a discount that you can get by clicking on that link and ordering the Starbond glue whatever you need um, on on that link uh, it takes you to the website and, and it just gives you my code and then with that I'm able to receive a little bit but at the same time you're receiving a uh, at least a 10% but I, I was toying with 15 I just couldn't remember what I was what I was actually going to wind up doing. So I got the CA glue going all over the place and when it's done it'll it'll look better than that. Now we're taking the face plate off and I already have the the uh, chuck on the other end and now I've got it mounted with the chuck. I had already drilled into it and I realized I didn't turn the camera on. Sorry about that. There's just so many things going on. I'm watching the motor and trying to make sure it doesn't burn up. Once it burns up, then it, it will get to the point where it won't even turn. And so I'm real going real, real slow with the drill. It doesn't look it, but it's a sped up, uh, about 500 times or 500 percent so quite a bit i i like watching you know wood turning videos i just i don't watch a lot like i used to but i enjoy watching what i'm doing here and sometimes I forget to record, so I have to back up and start over. Okay, got the bowl gouge out and using the wings to use it as a kind of a scraper. I seem to be into scrapers right now. I also like that inch and a half that's real thick. The good news or good thing about it is that you can go over cracks and things like that because it's it's so thick it doesn't grab this when I'm on 
with the wings going it's just like scraping it with a razor with with a blade or knife blade it it can grab hold to a crack and and uh make it a grand canyon and this is just me sharpening something i think me that i'm sharpening the bow gouge on it and it doesn't take but just a little bit And it holds a good, uh, it holds a good edge. It, it is the high speed tool from Hurricane. And I didn't, this is sharpen it once in about a week. I sharpened it on the other video. So that's pretty good. But now I can't really get into it and start cutting it hard because I just don't need to heat it up again and here again I think I've probably in the course of this day probably let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes twice and just just didn't want to getting as close as I'm getting to finish this I, I got more and more worried about it and I just didn't need it to burn up smoke again catch on fire whatever it's going to do quit I guess is the ultimate thing I don't want it to do now if you noticed there was a huge crack in the base that crack is so big and so unreal that it actually turned out to be pretty and I put star bond I mean I put um, total boat resin with black a black dye in it and filled it up because I would have used an ounce or more filling all that up with uh, the starbine glue i just poured resin in there and, and then leveled it out like i said there's so many things that actually happen you just got to cut out something and or cut out a lot this is probably six hours well well of six hours of recording but two days of working on this bowl and and uh just getting things done I'm being uh, real careful and trying to go straight because of that knot that I'm actually cutting through uh and you can see it at the bottom right there of the ball and it's coming away pretty good and it's, it, I'm just taking it real easy and thinking about everything blowing apart I'm using a carbide tip that has a square end on it that's why it's so flat like that it's a good coater and it also has a negative break on it so that I can just take it easy going over these knots and all. And there's Chester who is uh loves to roll in the sawdust and I have to brush him off before he goes in or blow him off. I can't blow him off because he likes to bite the air. And that's a whole nother story. But he's a good dog. And that was another good picture of the crack. And that's not just brown wood. That's down in the wood. That's how wide the crack is. And like I said, there's some... There's some... Pictures at the end of the video if you'll wait and see you'll see all this covered in black so now what we got going is I'm putting a resin clear on here and I have already put a light coat and sanded it down kind of use it as a as a sanding sealer kind of the first coat and it was just a 
just a little bit to put something down and sand it and then put this coat on. This is my old lathe, by the way. I just have a little nothing motor turning it. And it looks like it's going fast right there, but it turns uh, about 12 to 14 RPMs a, a minute. So it, it's going much slower. And this time I did put a plastic bag on the chuck and take the edges of the bag down so that I wouldn't get the resin all in the chuck and then have to clean it out. And if you saw my video about that, then I certainly do appreciate it. If you didn't, and if you ever need to know how to take your G3 uh, chuck apart, then all you got to do is watch the video. Now, there's, there's an hour of sanding that took place prior to putting this on. Now you can kind of see how big the cracks are. And this was all sanded down. So these cracks are, are covered. And then there, there's a huge one inside. And I don't think the lighting really helped out. But these are how wide the cracks are. I think it actually turned out real good. I actually put a box over it. And I got this from... Another good wood turner to keep the dust and bugs and things like that. I don't have problems with bugs, but I do with the dust falling in the night. Please remember that God is good, and I appreciate y'all watching this. Thank you.